Now let me let me go find my slides and we'll just start from here. Are you recording this? Yep. Um, uh, yeah. Assuming I hit the button properly, then yes, I am. All right. Um, so uh, my name is David Simons. For those of you who don't know me, um, from San Antonio, work at Rackspace with uh, several of the gentlemen here. Um, you can find me on Twitter at David Steinmetz, or you can find me at Drupal.org or GitHub at Widgets Burritos, because um, I have inconsistent branding. So you know, whatever. Um, <clears throat> but um, yeah, so I'm going to talk. I'm going to talk a little bit about a module that. Myself and some of you know the people on our team have been uh, working on for a little while um, called Web Page Archive, and we're going to get into what it is, what it does, how it works, um, all kinds of stuff like that. Um, um, but let's just go ahead and take the overview or the outline. Uh, we're going to start with an overview of the high level, what the module is. We're going to get a little detailed, a little technical with a few things, and also explain some of the different things that can happen uh, with it. Um, we're going to identify the project roadmap where we are currently, where we're going, um, ways that you can help uh, contribute if you feel so inclined. I'm going to do a quick demonstration at the end and then uh, Q&A. But that said, if you have questions midstream, just hit me up and I'll answer them as well. So, All right. So to start, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start with a list of problems um, that may have come up in some of our conversations at Rackspace. Um, and, there were different reasons that these questions came up, and these weren't the specific questions. These are just examples. But um, for instance, what did that page look like on October 17th? What was the content of that page on June 19th? Well, when did that bug in introduced, or when did that setting change, or how are these new CSS, HTML, JavaScript changes going to affect the rest of our website? Like, you know, maybe you know, for those who were last week, we're not using a good BIM standard, and it starts affecting other parts of the website and like how does how are these things going to impact parts of the website that I'm not necessarily expecting changes to happen. And so these are just a few problems that I'm sure a lot of us can relate to. We're just, you know, what 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 are the answers to these problems? Well, for us, our solution was a module that we built called the Web Page Archive module. Um, think um, way back when machine, but in Drupal. Um, and also can do more. Um, so currently, the project lives in two places. Of course, Drupal.org also lives in GitHub because I do not like um, the patch system in Drupal.org, so I tend to do a lot of my work out of GitHub. But um, they maintain parity, so they're pretty even. Um, but you can find it uh, at both of those addresses. Uh, currently, the project maintainers, um, myself, uh, David Porter back here, and then um, another guy on our team uh, based out of London, Paul Modern. Um, he is he helped us get it all set up as well, done a lot with code review. Additionally, uh, JT here, he's um, contributed some. He's helped with code review a lot as well. I always corner him and tell him to review the code and merge it in. <clears throat> but so at a high level, a web page archive is a module that allows you to uh, use Drupal to perform what I'm going to say is periodic snapshots on local and remote websites based on a list of either URLs or XML sitemaps. So, what this means is you can perform a snapshot on any site, not just your local instance, not just a Drupal-based website, not just sites that you host, and not just sites that you own. But I left that disclaimer to be nice. You know, you're basically creating a crawler that can go take snapshots of any particular website. So um, don't spam your competition to where they block your IP. You know, that kind of stuff. But um, anyway, the basic requirements for the module. Drupal 8, uh, 3, and plus. Um, hopefully, people run 8.4, but 8.3 was what we built it in, so that's what I can guarantee it works in. Um, I can't guarantee 8.1, 8.2. I'm pretty sure I'd use some 8.3 specific stuff in there. So, um, PHP 7 plus, uh, that's based on some of the uh, dependencies we use. They're PHP 7 plus, so as extension, this module is also PHP 7 plus. And this module currently, in its current state, has to be installed via Composer. It, because of the way it handles some of the dependencies and uh, packages it pulls in, it has to go through. Um, all right. Any questions so far? Okay. So at the core, it's based on a couple of uh, different types of entities. Um, so there's the main web page archive entity, um, which is a configuration entity um, that contains settings for a distinct job. So if I say, hey, I want to go capture rackspace.com, you know, I want to go capture a screenshot of that website, every page of our website, 
every day, um, that's where those settings live. It's daily or weekly or monthly or um, I, I want to capture at this width or I want to capture, you know, with whatever settings I decide to define. That's, that's where those settings will live is inside the configuration entity. Um, each configuration entity is then mapped to a content entity um, that contains actual capture results. So for every, t for every configuration entity you have, it's mapped to a content entity, and that entity has revisions. So what you can say is the first revision is the very first time you captured a snapshot of, of those settings. The next revision is the next time you capture it, and the next revision is the time after that. What that does is it allows us to make use of, um, eventually make use of some inherent uh, functionality inside Drupal to do comparisons and stuff between revisions. We haven't quite got that far yet, but we'll get more into that later. <clears throat> but yeah, so each job run is stored in a separate revision. Um, and the way that is done is each, con uh, each configuration entity uh, connects to what, we, uh, what we're calling a capture utility. And a capture utility is just a mechanism that can go capture a snapshot of whatever it is you decide you want to capture. Um, and we'll get into the different types, but for example, if you think of Wayback Wind Machine, you know, it's a screenshot of what a, a page looked like at any given time. Well, we have a capture utility that is specifically for capturing screenshots. Um, so for the technically inclined people who are curious, um, a capture utility, it's a plugin. It's discoverable through annotations, um, and you'll, you'll tend to see them either implementing capture utility interface or extending capture utility base. Uh, it's kind of the same thing. Utility base actually implements the interface, but um, you can kind of define it either way. And then there's a subset of those which are configurable capture utilities, um, which allow you to provide additional configuration settings for your capture utility. So for instance, uh, a screenshot capture tool, you may want to say, well, hey, let the user say, I want to capture that at 1,280 pixels. I want to capture at 480 pixels. Basically, I want to see what my website looks like in mobile. I want to see what it looks like in desktop. I want to see what it looks like in tablet. You know, you have you can expose those kind of settings to the user. This is the basic structure of what that looks like from a code perspective. Um, I'm not going to get too in deep uh, in depth here, but uh, just to show you, as I mentioned above, like it's it uses annotations to uh, to discover these plugins, and so the annotation here says that it's a capture utility. It's got this ID, which is the skeleton capture. Um, it's got this label of skeleton capture utility, and it's got a description. Um, and each capture utility is going to implement. Or, or extend these functions. The ones that I will highlight are the capture uh, function or capture method. Um, that one, you pass in a data, uh, a data array, which can contain anything, really. But some of the stuff that's going to come in is, for instance, I want to go capture this URL. So if I want to go capture um, Amazing Labs, I can go specify, pass that URL in to this capture utility, and it's going to go to amazylabs.com or I'm assuming that's your website. Um, and it will go capture that, uh, that website. Uh, the get response method is responsible for then taking that captured data and returning a response that you can do something with. So it's not just raw, like a raw capture. It actually can render out the capture um, in that response. Then you have the next three methods that are default configuration, build configuration form, submit configuration form. Basically, if this is a configurable capture utility, you can, the build uh, method is where you say, hey, we've got a width field. We've got um, whatever fields that go along with it. Uh, the default configuration is where the default settings live, and submit configuration form is what happens once you submit that form. And then there's a cleanup revision um, method, which I'll actually get into in, uh, a little later as to what it does, but it kind of does what it says. It cleans up a revision. So, Captured data is stored and rendered using capture response objects. And you'll usually see these either implementing a capture response interface or a capture response base. And, um, and so this is just the, basically the way you say, OK, so I went and captured this data. Well, in the case of a screenshot, what are we capturing? It's a, an image of what the page looks like. But what, what if we're capturing something else? What if we're capturing some JSON object or some HTML or something else? Well, 
it, it may be, you may handle those differently. So that's why we have these capture response objects because it allows you to handle the data you're capturing based on the context of what that data is. So an example of that would be this URI capture response. And this is a very low level uh, capture response that basically says, this response stores a file somewhere on our system. So if you go capture a screenshot, it's going to go save this capture somewhere on your system. So, um, so that's all that the URI capture response is saying, um, is that it's stored as a URI somewhere on your system. Um, this typically should be ex extended for particular use cases. And the reason for that is the way I store a screenshot versus the way I store HTML, it, like you're not gonna display those the same way. And so, because of that, we have cases like this where we have HTML capture response and screenshot capture response, which actually go through and they extend that URI capture response. Um, and both of these uh, responses, uh, they, they actually have two different displays you can show. They have a preview mode and a full, like fully rendered version. And what that basically turns into is if you capture some HTML on a website, it's going to, basically, the preview mode just shows you a link. But when you click on the link, um, it actually opens up a modal that has a syntactically highlighted uh, HTML that you can then scroll through and see what the HTML of that page looked like at any given point in time. Um, same thing with screenshot. But in this case, the preview mode is just a thumbnail of the, the capture. And then when you click on it, it actually shows you the full version of it. Any questions so far? All right. Typical format of a capture response, um, it's got a constructor, which you basically pass in the content, which in the case of these URI ones, it's the path to the file you're saving locally on your system, and the URL that's actually being captured. Um, it also has a method to ca calculate size. Um, so this becomes useful because when you start capturing large amounts of data, you want to know how much data you're capturing. So um, it provides the facilities to return that. Um, it has a uh, renderable method, and this method uh, actually returns a render array that allows you to, based on certain parameters, um, that will then output your response. And then uh, the cleanup revision. So this is where I mentioned earlier that I was going to come back to this. So imagine, imagine this, you know, you're, you're running. We're talking about capturing a bunch of images. Well, let's say I want to capture a website, a, a list of URLs or something, and then I'm done with it. Well, what happens to all those files? Do they just sit on my system and take up huge amounts of data, and then all of a sudden my hard disk is filled up? Or do I have facilities to clean it up? Well, uh, we have this cleanup revision, and there's some other functions around other stuff that will actually go through and uh, clean up individual revisions based on the revision ID. And the key thing here is each response type may have its own way of cleaning things up. So we expose that uh, so that they can do this cleanup. Clear so far? Yeah. <clears throat> All right, so we talked about kind of the semi uh, basic concepts. Uh, let's talk about what we're actually capturing. So. The, the main reason we built this tool was for the screenshot capture utility, so it seemed important that I highlight this one first. Um, it, what it does is it captures screenshots of URLs. Um, how it works, it currently uses PhantomJS, although we are looking to switch to headless Chrome. Um, we'll cover that a little bit more later, but for those of you who aren't familiar with PhantomJS, it doesn't necessarily keep up with web standards, so we're hoping to uh, switch to a new browser. Um, and all the responses here, I mentioned it earlier, but all the responses here are stored as these screenshot capture response objects. Um, so all of the capture utilities, what we decided it, um, when we were talking about this, I may have interest in capturing screenshots. You may have interest in capturing HTML. You may have interest in capturing something completely different. I don't necessarily want to see this clutter of capture utilities in my list if I don't have use for things. So what we've done is everything we, uh, every capture utility we've built so far, we've exposed either as a sub-module or a separate contrib module. And the reason for that is because, once again, not everybody needs, to, needs everything. So we're allowing people to turn on and off the features they want. So this, module, uh, this capture utility lives in a sub-module called WPA Screenshot Capture. 
Whereas HTML capture utility lives in a submodule called WPA HTML capture. And what does it do? It captures raw HTML of a URL. Um, and the reason why we do both is because it's it's a lot easier to, uh, well, so we can go look and see what a page looks like at any given point in time with screenshots. But what happens if we're interested in copying that text out and things like that? It's a, a bit, little bit harder to do when it's in an image unless you get some weird OCR stuff involved. And that's just more headache than sports. So we created the HTML capture utility to allow us to also capture the HTML. And then we can more easily grab some of the content out of there. Um, and it, how this works is it uses Guzzle, which is part of Drupal core, to basically create HTTP connections to go do a basic GET request and goes and grabs the raw HTML. These responses are then stored using the HTML capture response object. Good so far? The skeleton capture utility. This is a fun name, but what does it do? It does absolutely nothing. So because of that, why does it exist? Well, two reasons. One. It's a prototype for how to build other capture utilities. So if you're familiar with the examples module, they give you examples of how to do stuff. Well, this is kind of our take on examples. It's here's an example skele uh, skeleton capture utility that you can take. You can go clone this and make whatever capture utility you want without having to try to figure out how all of it works. It's the very bare, bare, uh, bare minimal to get it to work. Um, so that's the, the main reason. But the secondary reason is we can actually use this to test the surrounding behavior without having to perform actual uh, captures. So if I'm actually not interested in the capturing, but I'm interested in trying to make sure my queue uh, mechanism works or my cron stuff works, well, I don't necessarily want to have to go capture a URL to test that. I can use the skeleton in that case to do it as well, and it saves time from a development standpoint. So. Um, that one lives in the WPA skeleton capture submodule as well. And those are the three main ones that come uh, with the module itself. Um, on top of that, we were, for those of you who were here earlier, we were discussing this a little bit. We currently have an experimental module on Drupal.org, which is a separate module, but it's called Performance Budget, which um, David Porter has actually been doing a little bit of work on um, as well. but. The idea here is we can ca we can capture performance metrics on a website at any given point in time and over time and start developing trends and, and things. So we actually built a web page test.org capture utility that will go, like if you wanted the configuration settings is you go put an API key. Actually, JT right here built this. Um, yeah, good job. Uh, <laughs> but, but what it will do is uh, you enter those settings and you run this capture. It'll go run these tests on webpagetest.org. Uh, it actually then has to wait a minute or two for the responses, and then it will just keep pulling for responses till the test is done. It gets those responses. It stores it locally. Um, now, right now, we can capture this data. We have no way of displaying it. So it's at this point, it's just purely capture data. Like It's semi-useless. But we're capturing this for our stuff, which means once we can actually display it, we can retroactively go and like go look at this stuff, but that's down the road. But um, so this is an area. This is why this is still kind of experimental because it's not ready for consu mass consumption yet. Additionally, uh, another capture utility I've been toying with is the idea of a con configuration capture utility, where we were. These other examples were. These are outside pages looking in. This one is actually hey, let me look at my own instance of Drupal internally. If I go look at any given point in time, hey, what was this configuration setting today? What was it yesterday? What was it the day before? When did that setting change that then introduced a bug into my system? Um, and those are the kind of things that I'm trying to tackle with this. So this is still experimental, too. It's not ready, but um, it's, it's in the works. Additionally, we have some other kind of uh, tossed around some ideas around some other things we could do. Um, a, a rendered DOM capture utility. So instead of the raw HTML like we're capturing through Guzzle, uh, we could actually go render the DOM, go see the effects of JavaScript on our code. We could go capture subsections of, of pages. We don't have to capture the full page. Um, I think that kind of thing would give us a lot of flexibility to just focus in on what we really want instead of just grabbing everything, which is sometimes hard to uh, pro process. 
Additionally, we have where we've tossed around the idea of a Google Analytics threshold monitor. Um, basically, you say, hey, if some event, you know, you're expecting the events to stay between 20 and 50 for a certain event, and if it goes below or it goes above that event, uh, event uh, threshold, then you could say, well, hey, at this point, let's go notify someone something is up or you know what needs to happen, and it allows you to. Uh, go at, uh, take an action on some something that's happening on your site, like basically in real time. And yeah, there might be facilities to do this kind of stuff outside of Drupal. I just think it's cool to have this kind of stuff inside Drupal as well. Um, another idea that we talked, or I've kind of talked about um, with myself, uh, a composer package update monitor. I mean, we were talking about it earlier. We have composer packages, and uh, well, for those who were here early, sometimes. You have to explicitly set versions. Well, how do you know when those packages get out of, out of date? Well, you could potentially have Drupal monitor your Composer JSON file and just say and go regularly check for updates on some of these modules. And you have a little dashboard inside Drupal that says, "Hey, these are the modules that need, or, or the plugins within Composer or packages within Composer that need updates." Um, and then we talked about a security scan utility. I don't know exactly what that is either. Probably similar to Web Page Test, where it goes and pushes something out to a third party to do some security analysis and then returns results back. Um, once again, these are just ideas. Nothing's really fleshed out with any of these, but just some things we've been talking about. Any questions, comments? Yeah. yeah. First of all, phenomenal. So for us with your, your settings capturing, is there any kind of uh, current diff functionality? Uh, so I'm going to actually get into that as to uh, as in the uh, roadmap, like where we're at and where we're going. Um, to answer your question now, uh, not presently, but that is like version 1.1. .1, that's what we want to get in there. Um, but we'll get into that a little bit more moving forward. What's the advantage of doing config capturing in Drupal versus like it? Like if you're, are you not managing your config in version control already? Well, when I say configuration, that may be like the incorrect term per se. Let's just say any exportable config setting. Like, so basically, it would be more of not configuration, but database setting changes that just happen to go in the config data. So whether or not you're managing these things in configuration management, you could actually monitor it. That's kind of what I'm going Now, once again, I haven't actually built it all out to do that. So what, how feasible that's going to be, I don't know. These are just things I'm toying with. So. But, but yeah, so more of, hey, can we identify when not just configuration, but something in the config table change. Does that would clarify? Oh. Yeah. All right. So kind of going to that current project status. So this module, it's currently in beta one and it's been a it's been a fun ride. I mean, honestly for for us, this was a lot of our really big intro into D eight from actually writing code. I mean we've done the certifications. We've Played with it, but actually getting down, building a plugin, building a module. This was um, kind of our guinea pig before we tried to convert our entire website into G8. So, um, so you know, to that point, there may be things that are done incorrectly. So, yeah. Yeah, feel free to uh, complain about those things and also fix them. <laughs> <laughs> but um, here's what we can do now: we can reliably capture screenshots in HTML. Uh, we can capture both manually and automatically. Um, we can use a cron tab based scheduler. Um, so for those familiar with cron tab, it's a way, basically, you know, like in Unix, you can schedule something to happen at a certain time based off of format. We can do the same thing uh, within uh, Web Page Archive. Um, we can parse XML sitemaps. So if I say I want to parse every, or I want to go crawl everything on rackspace.com, I don't want to go manually curate that list and try to make it update every time some change happens to our website. So we just give it the your, or the path to our sitemap, and we just let it crawl our sitemap every day. Um, it honors robots.txt uh, restrictions. Um, so if people don't want their stuff crawled, uh, we can make it play nicely with that stuff. Now, there is, that is a configurable option. So if it's your own property and you don't care, you can turn it off. Or if you just want to be an ass, you, you know, you can just like, you know, whatever, just get blocked if that happens. But it, we do try to play nicely by uh, by working in uh, the robots.txt restriction handling. 
Um, there is decent test coverage for most functionality. Um, not 100% coverage, but we've got quite a bit of coverage in there. So uh, the code is tested. Got some basic garbage collection. Uh, going back to the clean re cleanup revision stuff I was showing you earlier, if we delete stuff, I don't want those files lingering on my server. And so let's go clean them up. And for now, uh, the user interface, it's very views driven, um, which, you know, is good because it's easy, but you know, is it the best user experience? You know, those are things that we can solve over time. So that's where we are currently. And there's other stuff here, but those are the major call-outs. So we're in beta one. Um, I have a release plan for 1.0, um, and there's a link to it. Uh, I'll push, uh, push these slides up somewhere so you'll have them for later. But, um, but with that, here are some major issues we want to do. Um, one, I, I mentioned we can configure individual capture utilities, like in certain contexts where I'm capturing rackspace.com at 1,280 uh, pixels. What I don't have is an actual global configuration setting that applies to everything or sensible defaults or things like that. So we have to go manually change things every single time we want to do variations that are different than what. And so I'm, what I'm proposing here is we basically have a, a global configuration panel that could allow us to put these settings at a higher level so you don't have to do it on a per case basis. The second major issue that I um, alluded to earlier is headless Chrome screenshot capture utility, or at least support, not necessarily a separate utility. Um, and the problem there is that PhantomJS just doesn't support things like CSS Grid, um, which we're finding ourselves using a little bit more these days. And so I can probably show you some examples of hey, this is not actually rendered properly on our website. And so that could be a source of confusion for some of the people who are going back and looking at this stuff. And so by switching to headless Chrome, the idea there is that we could potentially support the latest and greatest features and continually make it better. And also some per plugin permissions. That's another big one. It's basically, if I'm capturing HTML and you're capturing performance data, I don't necessarily need to share those permissions. Um, I'd like to be able to split those permissions up because some people only need access to certain things. So that's kind of where we are at uh, as far as getting to a one dot like a full one dot release. Um, it's pretty pretty stable. Um, you know, we're using it regularly in this beta state, and it, it's running pretty well. How many downloads have you had so far? How many folks are using it? I don't know how many people are actually using it. It said there's like 390 some downloads, but I don't know how many of those are just our build scripts going and downloading. Drupal.org. I don't know how they do the metrics. So like it's probably just us repetitively <laughs> downloading it. But um, I, I have had a, a few patches um, from random people cleaning up some stuff. So there's people at least trying it. I don't know how many people have actually thoroughly done much with it, but yeah. All right. Uh, the future roadmap. So that was where we're currently at. Things things we want to see in the future. We talked about it earlier, snapshot diff. Like, if I could take this functionality to where it's basically, here's what the functionality looked like yesterday, here's what it looked like today, now tell me what the difference between these two is. That takes this from being a, oh, hey, cool, we've got captures, to an actual useful tool. But some of the things that we've been talking about, actually, on the right up here, uh, David and I were discussing um, you know, how cool would it be to basically say, hey, you know what, here's my production website. Here is my development website. Tell me the difference. And, and like, so if you could use this to actually go capture not just one environment and compare it to itself, but one environment and compare it to another environment, you can use it as part of your QE or CI process. Um, as you kind of were asking earlier, like, how, you, how could you possibly use like diffs and stuff in your CI process. You could use a tool like this to kind of help facilitate it. It's not true CI, but you, it's a manual tool. You could go uh, put some settings in and say, hey, tell me the difference, and go run it and just see what happens. I was looking at um, Browser Stacks API. They have a screenshot. I'd be wondering if you ever thought about, because Headless Grow would be great if you're closer to like, the user experience, but you could integrate with Browser Stacks API. So like you add, whatever API key internally, and so it basically 
because you can actually submit, it'll send a request and then actually get a screenshot back. Yeah, yeah. So you could like, feel like that would be no, that would be cool. Grail of it. It sounds like you have a patch to contribute to the project. Um, <laughs> but yeah, but that that would be its own capture utility. You would have a browser stack one, which could do the same thing. And the thing is, they don't have to like not. You can't like have one or the other. You can have both. Like if you decide, hey, I want a browser stack to go tell me what my website looks like in IE ten. Like that would be fantastic. And uh, yeah, so if you, I mean, if you could use that kind of thing, I would. I would love to have something like that in here. I mean, hell, if you even want to create an issue and get the conversation started, I'm happy to have that conversation. And I would appreciate any feedback you give. So that's a great idea, and let's continue that conversation. Um, and additionally, another thing that I want to get in here pretty soon is I want to actually be able to inject JavaScript into the active session. And the reason for that is I might decide, hey, I don't care about this, this, this component. Let me just use some JavaScript or some, even jQuery or whatever. Just strip that stuff out. Or maybe I want to go push something into the data layer to go trigger an event. And I want to go see what the website looks like after an event fires. Well, you could potentially do that if you could just inject arbitrary J JavaScript into the capture and just say, OK, I've pushed into the data layer. Now what does my website look like? Um, and so that's something I'm looking, for, uh, looking forward to putting in there in the future as well. That's like the 1.2 release. As of my current map, I, this is all fluid. but. Um, that's one of the things I'm looking to do. Um, another big one is to not save duplicate captures. So remember how I told you that you know we store a lot of stuff. Well, space.com every day, um, like two in the morning. Um, I want to say on average it's about 500 megabytes per capture. And the thing is, certain pages don't ever change, like or they they may change, but it's just like minor changes or whatever. If today's version and yesterday's version are exactly the same, let's just save one version of that image instead of two separate versions that are completely identical. And so that's dependent on the diff functionality uh, getting in there. So after that gets in, I'd like to uh, fast follow with that. Additionally, uh, the run entity performance on larger sitemaps. So if you have a really large sitemap, the way that functionality currently works with the field capture. It's basically, um, if you have a, a 100 URLs, it captures one. Well, it pushes that into an array. And then you capture a second one. It's got to go retrieve that array and then push. And then it, every time it does a single uh, another iterative URL, it's got to go pull the entire array and then push into the bottom of the array. Like It's, it's a really um, non-performant thing when you start getting to large sitemaps. We have, what, 700 some URLs in our sitemap, and around the four or 500 mark is when it just starts getting a little slow. And it has nothing to do with the actual capturing itself. It has to do with just the raw uh, functionality of the pushing and popping of the array, or pushing and retrieving of the array. And this would be a good example of where we would use the skeleton capture utility to test this, because I don't want to have to go capture a bunch of data to go figure this out. Like, If I can just give a really long site, sitemap list and then just use the skeleton one just to go test the facility of, hey, is this working? You know, How long does it take? Um, that would be the ideal way of testing and kind of troubleshooting that. But apart from that, there's a lot of other ideas that are, um, that are in there, and you can find them all in the issue queue. But um, to that point, how can you help? And you know, for those of you who've seen Rick and Morty, Know the, the face, if not, sorry. But um, I just want you to show me what you got. But uh, so the project issue queue um, is you know, the first place to go. I mean, you go on, look on there, you go see what issues are in there. If you have a, uh, an idea or if you have a solution to a problem that's on there, go submit a patch go su or a pull request if you want to go to GitHub. I don't care. I'll, I'll take the changes either way. Um, if you feel so inclined to review code, um, if something's waiting for it, or report bugs, or submit feature request, write test. Uh, here's a good one, improve documentation. Um, right now, my documentation, it's informative, but it's very long and probably needs to be split up and put in a wiki somewhere. Um, so if anyone feels so inclined to just clean up some documentation, I, I will take that. Also, if anyone's uh, good at UX-related stuff, specifically around views, I will take that as well, because I am not. So. Um, to that point, enough talking about it, and let's actually
show some show some stuff. So, um, any questions or anything before we go? Cool. That's what eight? Yeah. Good. Yeah, we're good. All right. So what I'm going to do? We're going to start here. Um, oh, I was already done. I had got these commands ready, so all I had to do is run them real quick. Although it is going to go install a whole Drupal install, so it's going to take a second. Uh, while we're waiting for that to run, um, does anybody have a website with a sitemap on it? I don't think Amazing Labs had one. I, I looked and I didn't see a sitemap, so I can't use yours. So I can't use yours. Uh, Library of Congress. I, I don't want to go with that large of things. <laughs> um, well, you know what? Their their sponsor, I believe, Four Kitchens had one on their website. So yeah. we'll we'll go crawl. We'll go crawl Four Kitchens. And I say I believe I actually had already done the research on this. Um, I it was my failover if no one volunteered. So, um, and they actually have multiple sitemaps. So we'll just do their page sitemap here, which is. So, I'm still waiting for this kid. So I probably should have just pre-installed Drupal. I was just, I don't know, being lazy. How long you guys been working on this? When, when was it inception? So it's um, I don't know, PJ. When did we start this? Like summer sometime? Was it really when we started ideating on? Uh, ideating is really a word. Yes, it is. Oh wow, mm -hmm. it's a React space. Yeah, uh, <laughs> there's lots of words in React space. And so I think this is really a super initiative. Yeah. Um, yeah, and because, I mean, when we first started talking about it, a lot of it was just like, oh, let's just go build a tool. And I believe it was uh, David who was, had the idea. It was like, yeah, we can build it, but, like, why don't we build it and give back to the community and, like, make it something that other people can use. And, you know, if people use it, fantastic. If they don't, well, we're using it anyway. We're going to build it anyway. We just happen to build it in Europe. So. Um, that's kind of our mentality with it. So, I mean, I, I would love for you all to use it. I'd love for you. It has a lot of problems. Sure. Yeah. Um, yeah. If you can go back to 2012 and make it for Drupal 7, ask me would be super happy about that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. But, hey, you know what? This lives solely in Drupal 8, and you can go capture Drupal 7 sites. So, you know, you can have this be your only Drupal 8 site. <laughs> You're just using it. Yeah, Drupal is just the tool to deliver it and like facilitate it. Um, but I mean, we can go capture WordPress sites. We can go capture whatever .com. Like, it doesn't have to even be in a CMS. It could just be a flat HTML site. We can go capture. It. Used to be so Hello, 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 Hello. Hello. This is kind of what this sounds like. Why did you want to run arbitrary JavaScript within a session? Again? Um, there may be instances where JavaScript like triggers behavior. Like, think for instance, you have a web page that has like a tab on it, and you want to go trigger the third tab on the page, per se, maybe uh, you would have the ability to actually go inject that JavaScript to go trigger that. Simulate click. Or your marketing department required that you put a newsletter pop up for like people's first view of the page. Right. So that means every time you capture a home page, you're right. always capturing a newsletter, but you want to capture the actual home page. We actually have instances like that. Yeah, we actually have instances of that like right now on our um, other translations of our website, if you go to it from a US IP address, it pops up a little modal that says, hey, is this the correct region? So, well, that makes sense if you're actually in that region. But if I want to capture what that web page looks like, I don't want to capture that modal. So I want to go close that modal. So the issue, I mean, I I just see Chrome. I mean, I don't headless Chrome, I think, is probably very picky about simulating clicks, like you need some kind of selenium. Well, well no, not, 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 latest Chrome has a, an API for really? to, to replace most of the yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, and, and so so what what we're looking to do, um, and this is actually like relative <coughs> stuff, but uh, Google released a uh, GitHub repo or published a GitHub repo called uh, Puppeteer, which is like basically their Google yeah. Chrome Dev Tools, but unfortunately it all works in Node. It doesn't work in PHP, so I'm gonna have to kind of find a way to get them to connect and stuff um, within Drupal. But we can make it happen. It's just executing some shell scripts, but um, it's just a matter of getting it to all to work. But presumably, we could then interact with the entire Chrome Dev Tool uh, set through Puppeteer because Google has made this stuff available, and this is relatively new. Like it wasn't there like 
four or five months ago, I think, when I first was looking into this. So. Um, okay, so uh, that module should be installed. Blah, blah, blah. Uh, oh, I forgot to include that little snippet in there, so I gotta go grab something real quick. Um, so remember how I told you that the documentation was really long and verbose? Well, there, there it is. So yeah, let's let's take some of that out. Um, uh, that's like right in the way of my. Oh, that's fine. Let me go uh, update my composer JSON file here. So what I'm doing here is I'm actually currently the way the screenshot capture tool works is because it's it has like a custom Phantom JS installer. It's not just locally stored on the system. Um, it's actually going and installing Phantom JS. So it, it does these post install commands and stuff that I had to get in here. So um, that's basically what I'm adding in real quick. But I don't think that actually installed. That didn't look right. Here on Composer Update. Anyway, if that doesn't work, I have an actual instance of this that I can run this on. And you know what? Let's just do that. Let's let's make uh, rack space for the bandwidth fill on that. All right. So this is actually our um, our capture, and I can actually show you what our website looks like. You'll see we've ran we've ran this seventy nine times. Um, so that's about how long we've been using this um, for. And we have different versions of this, but um, at twelve eighty pixels, uh, we ran seventy nine times. At four eighty, that's our mobile. We did one less just because that's how it happened to get configured. But um, and then a HTML, we've been capturing a little less frequent, uh, not quite as long. So, but and each of these is your config entity. Um, yeah, yeah. Each one of these is my config entity. Yeah. So it, I can show you right here. I'm. Is that big enough? I can. There you go. So if I go into one of these and I just go edit this guy right here, the 1280, you'll see I got a label here or whatever. But do I capture the job automatically or is it a manual thing? Uh, what is the schedule I use? And once again, it's based off CronTab. So you know, for those unfamiliar with CronTab, you can go to this little URL here and it gives oh, you. Oh, that's a cool site. Yeah, it's very helpful. That's why I included it in there. It's just you know, if people need reference for how CronTab works, it's in there. I'm always like, everybody always. I'm always yeah. Like, <laughs> Right. Um, we have this nice little setting here, which is a timeout. So if you don't want to just peg a server, you want to wait a certain amount of time between captures, you can say, wait, well, I'm waiting a tenth of a second, but if we want to wait, you know, five seconds between each capture, you know, you can do that. It, just, it doesn't matter. Like, you know, it, we just provide that facility. So you can be a little bit more friendly, especially when you're capturing external sites. Additionally, honor the robots TXT restrictions. Since this is our own website, we don't do it, but. So is there a way to even artificially throttle that down some more so you can keep a limit of the <coughs> file? Um, this is going to, you know, the cycle is going to be to the, the timeout of the, whatever you're hitting. Yeah, the the cycle. Yeah, thank you. That's what I'm looking for. Like I, I want to tune it down so I just want like like a snail's pace sort of. Well, then you just set this timeout very high. Okay. If you if you set it to, it's basically going to wait that amount of time before it does the next capture. Oh, for a long amount of time. Yeah, yeah. So if you have a list of a hundred URLs, you can say wait. Oh, that's. Uh, I yeah. See what that's yeah. Doing. All right. Yeah. Um. So to that point, you know, you want to hide your identity. Well, you can go put in a different uh, user agent if you want. Um, we use WPA because we actually will sometimes run like A/B tests on our website, and we actually exclude uh, WPA from our A-B test. So we don't sometimes capture the variant and sometimes capture the... Uh, How did you do the next run on this? Did you, like... I built it. You like, wrote it? Well, uh, let me say, let me rephrase it. Yeah, I, I built it on top of a uh, a library I found on uh, packages. OK. So the, someone already had some of the logic. I just kind of, yeah, processed the chronic expression. OK. Sure. Right. Um, I had to do a little bit of massaging to get it to work, but yeah, like the core logic, I can't come. But uh, and if you look at the composer JSON file, you can see what the source uh, packages. I don't remember off the top of my head, but um, but yeah. So you'll see here the um, oh right here capture type. So whether or not you're capturing just a list of URLs or sitemaps. So we're using a sitemap URL. So I just plug in my sitemap main here. And I uh, my capture utility is a screenshot, and then I can go then further uh, edit my screenshot capture. So it's capturing at 1280. It's a PNG type. That's how it's storing the image. 
Um, the background color for when there's not a render space is white, um, but you can set it to hot pink if you really so felt so inclined. Um, you know, to each his own. Um, and then I don't know why the delay is here too. I I feel like. Oh, 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 yeah, I remember what this one is. Um, so this delay is actually slightly different than the timeout. This is basically saying wait a quarter of a second before you capture, because sometimes there's JavaScript or something that has to finish uh, rendering. And so this it was actually to help reduce a little bit of that variance there we were getting. Because, for instance, on our website, we have a chat slider that shows up on the like side of our website. Well, because that takes various things to happen before it shows up, Sometimes it was showing up, sometimes it wasn't. I just added the delay in there, so it's basically all the That seems to be the delay I would want. I don't want to wait this amount of time before I do something. Yeah, so you could say, wait right. three seconds before you capture right. the screenshot. That's okay. Yeah. Cool. It makes sense to do that instead of, like, if you're going to have the timeout. Right? Well, you might well set the timeout to there, there are two different things. One's a timeout. Answer. Yeah. I think it would have the same effect. Yeah. yeah. In well, that. not necessarily. This, so what this is saying is we start the capture. But wait this amount of time before we take the screenshot. So it's basically like loading your browser and saying, wait three seconds and then take a screenshot of the page. The timeout we were talking about was, hey, let's take a capture of Rackspace.com. Wait three seconds, then take a capture of right. Rackspace.com slash manage host. It's more just like yeah. if you have the, you're trying not to hammer the site. Right, right. You might as well just set that first timeout to zero. So you would, so you basically you get the benefit of not hammering the site, but then you also get the benefit of it will wait for assets to load as well. Right. So this to me seems like the more maybe useful. Yeah. You, you have competing interests, yeah. yeah. And and you could use both. If it's a different capturing utility, yeah. Like, that option, like if it's just capturing the HTTP elements in there, you don't need to have like a like a load time delay. Right. And to be you to that point, throttle the other configuration so that you're not like getting it right five hundred HTML across the Well, and, and to to that point, well, more to Porter's point, I guess, um, this specific setting is only in the screenshot capture utility. The other settings uh, can apply to any capture utility. So they're not exactly the same context. Like, so you could use one, you could use both, you don't have to use either. Okay, uh, nice. That makes sense. Yeah. Do you have revisions? Is there like yeah, yeah. Like yeah, here, let me, let me show you what these results actually look like. So the... the um, so instead of actually just going and running a job, I'll just show you what our results look like, and that's probably, I think, sufficient for and I assume it runs, right, you hit it, yeah, it runs in the background. Nothing happens when you hit submit, it just waits until the next time it runs. Oh, you well, can force it to start. So, so you can force it to run, like, in your okay. browser, and, and what, what that'll do, um... But it'll run, like, if you hit start run, nothing, it's not gonna load, like, it runs... I guess it's simple, so. Yeah, here, this, this is a short job. Let me just show you what this looks like. So this is capturing just like all of our regional home pages. So if I go click start run here, this is the manual run here. Oh, does it mean you have to wait? Well, if you run it manually, you have to wait. I mean, that's by nature of the way the manual run works. If you configure it via cron, it's just going to happen in the middle of the night, and it's ready for yeah. you the next day. Like, It'd be cool if it showed you some of the images. I don't know. That's not that good. Anyways, it, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cool. But so yeah, the patch is welcome. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I know. It's not that like useful. It would just be cool. I don't think it would be that. Yeah, this is just core Drupal batch processing. Yeah, yeah. This is yeah. Like, so we would have to. We'd have to manipulate Drupal's uh, batch okay. processing. So it's harder than it's yeah. 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 That's why it's a very non-pretty screen because it's Drupal. Like. Okay. <laughs> well, that's just Drupal, isn't it? <laughs> oh. It's a cool loader. Okay. Yeah. So. But so. I mean, we can let that run in the background. See, it's got a few more to go. Um, but while we're waiting, let's go, let's just go look at one of our runs. So this is um, this is Rackspace.com. <laughs> so you'll see every day here, um, it ran at two in the morning, and it tells us how many items captured. So what you'll see is sometimes the numbers go up, sometimes the numbers go up or down because we're sometimes publishing on publishing content, and that's the whole point of using the sitemap is so we don't have to maintain a list. 
And you can see the cumulative, yes, I know Doug is happening tonight, thank you. Um, uh, you can see the cumulative size. So each one of these is almost 500 megs a piece. In some cases, higher than 500 megs for whatever reason. I don't know what the reason behind the, the discrepancy is, but it just decided to sort things differently. So, um, or maybe we had something else in there. But you'll see over time, things are changing. So let's say I want to go see what our website looks like. Let's go back a little. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's weird. It's like getting more efficient. I, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. But let's, let's just go pick uh, October 10th here. And what we see here is some screenshots. And it's going to take a second because, like, keep in mind, I don't know what happened to that one. It's probably just a cache issue or something, or it just needs, like, a refresh. But um, So we, we can just scroll through here. Yeah. It, let's refresh that. Let's see. There you go. But you can... Scroll, scroll through and look at thumbnails. Now you'll see they're all various heights and stuff like that. So because of that, and I'm also trying to put the URLs here, like there's overlap. So this is the kind of UX stuff that I would like to improve that I would appreciate you know, assistance with if anyone wants to do. But um, I can go and just say, well, on this uh, day, this is what our history page looked like. History page is one of those things that doesn't change very much. So we don't necessarily need a bunch of copies of this one. But um, but then when you click on it, you can actually scroll through a larger version of it. It's kind of easier to have a mock. You can just go to that day and be like, okay. Right. This is what this page looks like. Are you sure this is not the Wayback Machine? Yeah. It well, kind of yeah. is the Wayback Machine. It's just our. For your private. It's our, for our private consumption. Yeah. Right. And so you'll see here, you know, this is just views. So we've exposed some filters here. Yeah, because the Wayback Machine only index, like, does not index. Yeah, and you can request them to capture like in a certain moment, but I think it's all manual. There's not an API you can use, or you have to get a license for it. And spend a lot of money with, it. and it's just like, no, let's use Drupal to do it. Well, that there was a lot, but um, to that point though, like I get bored, and my open source contributions that happen in the evenings happen against this project. So it's like, yeah, Rackspace contributed some time. I contributed some time. You know, however we want to classify. I mean, if I had to figure out what to do it myself too. Yeah. Yeah. No. No. It's a valid point. But so we use it for other things, right? It's yeah. More framework, right? Right. For capture and analysis than anything else, because we have other needs. Yeah. Brandon yeah. has a great point. You guys have an economy of scale that you can afford to do cool stuff like this. Awesome. Oh, totally, right? So oh, that's yeah. our this, this serves as a really good QE utility as well. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Because if we make little changes to the website, we don't have someone from quality going through every page and checking to make sure that this thing looks right. They can actually go and do a manual run, and within 30 minutes, they can see the entire website and thumbnails. That's awesome. Well, so you can go through every, well, every page and make sure that. It's cool. You could create like a Docker container that just has this, and literally yeah. it's just like a standalone. Because this app itself, I would say, there's a lot of companies that have probably stuff like this, but it just like lives on a server. And it's like some yep. premium script that you know, make a lot of contribution separation. But yeah. the cool thing is you're leveraging Drupal's entity. Yeah, and, yeah. That's an entity rat, cool. and you're actually using the revision API. Right, right, and that's what I really wanted to do is take advantage of the revisions because we already have some of the diff functionality in there. So it's really just tapping into Drupal's ability to compare to revisions um, and making it look nice. Um, I don't know exactly what that looks like because I haven't started to work on it yet, but I'm open to feedback. I mean, I, you know we're going to spend time, though. But this, you put a lot of time in this. Like well, here, let me just show you this. Um, if I go to the main page, 159 commits by me. Uh, another 14, 14 by David, uh, two by Paul. Uh, let's see. You know, so we got some other commits from other contributors. So I've definitely put a lot of work into this, and we've definitely had some other contr contributions that um, have helped. And then keep in mind, there's also the external performance budget module and the configuration archive module stuff that we've been working on as well, or kind of toying with as well. So there's definitely been a ton of work that's going on. So. Are you thinking about doing anything? Why did you choose Big, well, performance budget was all, it was actually a completely separate module to begin with. And so that one's more a very, it, it's got more than just a capture. It's, it's got like threshold monitoring and stuff like that that we're eventually wanting to get in there. So that one was always a separate module. Yeah. Configuration archive, um, that one just seemed like a different type of capture to me. 
like where a lot of this web page archive stuff that we're doing here, this is outside looking in. Whereas configuration ar archives kind of like you know monitoring internal settings. So the idea is if I say, you know, you can install configuration archive and it's dependent on web page archive, you don't necessarily need to know web page archive exists to go use configuration archive. Yeah, you just compose or install and it's gonna go handle all the dependency stuff. So because in my mind it was a complete like separate concept, I wanted it to be a separate one. Once again, it's still experimental, so who knows, it may get relocated at some point. Um, if we even finish it, it's a matter of time. So um, but Going back to my example of why um, PhantomJS is not great, here's a capture I did of Drupal.org. You'll see right here, like this little guy right here. Let's go look and see what it's supposed to look like. Um, and you get these. False it's supposed to look like this. Yeah. You get false alarms where you're just like. Yeah. And it's really frustrating because you're like, oh, something's up. Yeah, you actually go through it, right? And then you're right. like, "Oh, actually." But that's not going to be rare. It, it's it's not super common. I mean, if we go back to the, uh, I've definitely ages. seen that with fandom. Uh, like, because I use fandom to do some stuff. Previously, yeah. and I saw like bugs. Just like not every page could get captured. Yeah, I'm trying to see if I can find a good example in here of in ours where it is, but. Um, Actually, that wasn't the case. That one's actually, I think, was okay. It was, it. I don't know. I, I don't remember. There was something in here when I when I was running against it, and I was just like, "Well, that's that's gone awful." Like, you know, we need to get that fixed. And that's that's the reason why I escalated Google Chrome um, from being a nice to have feature in some future version to we need to have it like in in one because and and what we what we were talking about too. David and I were actually chatting a lot about this in the drive up. Um, you know, we're going to still support Phantom. We're going to still have it in there, but we're going to also support Chrome. And maybe we'll support Firefox. So you'll have like a little check. Yeah, it'll be a little checkbox or a drop down or something. You just say, hey, in this case, let's use Firefox. Well, in this case, you're going to try the new, what? You have the new Firefox. Um, what's it? What's oh, yeah, Quantum. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I actually this morning tried running a screenshot test on it, and um, it has some problems. Um, and no script, no the, script uh, the new version of no script's not up yet. The, the Quantum, they released it like uh, yesterday. He said a couple days ago last time. Um, yeah, this is it. This is um, Firefox Quantum. Yeah, Firefox Quantum, yes. Uh, no script uh, for, for this version. No, what do you mean, no script? The add on. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, it's not an add on anymore. It's an API or whatever they call it. Uh, gotcha. Okay. Yeah. There's a new CSS engine in there. Yeah. It, it's actually really freaking fast, too. Yeah, it, and so it, it's actually cool, but the screenshot capture right now is not up to par. Um, it's missing sections of our website. If I actually, if I go find the uh, thing here, I might be able to actually rerun the command. Uh, let's see. No, no, no. This is what the Q and A is for. Like, let's do this. Um, yeah, yeah, here we go. Let's just go grab this guy right here. And let's see, what directory am I in? Yeah. Oh, I already have Firefox open. That's one thing with headless uh, Firefox too is you can't actually have a browser window open. Um, but then it does weird stuff. So I don't. The right one. I don't know if that's the right screenshot. Hold on. Probably shouldn't just do it in my main folder. November 15th, is that today? Yeah, that's today. All right, let's go open this. And you'll see right here, we're actually missing sections of our website. This whole thing right here is not rendering. So Firefox's um, uh, screenshot capturing is not great yet. Chrome actually has its own set of problems. Um, is there a delay configuration in the It Maybe. I haven't played with it. I, I I literally, I literally did it like this morning when I just happened to be like playing with the new browser. I was like, "Hey, they got a new browser. I'm curious how their screenshot capture works." It, it looks like it's just, it's just an interesting and a long thing. Yeah. It's just waiting, it's like it's capturing on the screen. Yeah. So just to compare, like what it's supposed to look like. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. So remember how I said we're an A/B test? Well, that's our A/B test right there. So that's a difference. So there you go. 
Yeah, you get to you get to see what our A/B test looks like. Huh? Yeah, but that woman should be on the right side. Yeah. yeah. So she's missing, and then we have yeah. these tabs are not displaying at all. Like the tab themselves, the tab contents not displaying. Um, this image is completely There's missing. No live chat. Yeah. Well, no live chat, and and that could be the delay. That's happening. Yeah. Um, and then, like the entire footer is missing for reasons. So um, I'm not sure. So Firefox isn't ready yet. Um, but down the road it might be, and when it is, hey, it'd be great to be able to support it. So um, to that point, um, going back to what you mentioned earlier, uh, browser stack, if we could get it to go work in IE, and, you know, go capture these things, uh, I think that'd be great. If we could go get it to capture in Firefox on Windows machines, that would be fantastic. I would love that. So I would appreciate any assistance you can help in that. <laughs> so is this only for? Like if you're if you're behind a basic on, yeah. So we do it on our um, internal like uh, URLs. Um, mm -hmm. We're doing QE, so you can go there. Like actual basic off, like authorize that or anything like. Oh, that. oh. We could add that. We could add it. Yeah, it's not yeah. presently. But yeah. It seems like some mental health you have to add because of configuration. Yeah, I mean the configuration part. Right? Yeah, outside looking in. Yeah. Um, Did you have to add that? Oh, um, because the source like we're running to is also within our VPN, like or within our network, we were able to set up the network routes. Okay. To that. I want to see what the so behind beyond always be closing. Oh, yeah. Well, go to rackspace.com. You can click, click that button. I think Mike wrote it. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Do you guys have a blog like, quota? Do you have to like submit? I don't know. We have a whole team for that stuff. Yeah, I don't know. Know. <laughs> as devs, no. Uh, as devs, we do not know. That that would be bad. That's pretty. Because we're not very good writers, I think. <laughs> Except for that one that he wrote. Yeah, exactly. There's a reason we're not constant people. We're we're devs. We're we're <laughs> <laughs> we're good. We're good at code. We're, we're not gonna make you think something. Yeah. You're better at that. <laughs> hey, you know what? I, I felt like my slides the slides were pretty well documented. Your slides are great, man. Um, any other questions, comments, or anything on this? Um, I can further demo things, or we can get out of here, whatever y'all. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, if you put those slides up on, I mean, that'd be great to see the slides so we can look at them. Um, uh, yeah, where am I gonna put them? Um, I mean, if you have them available in some way, I can yeah. send them to Slack. I guess. I put them in that like, comment on the book. Oh, that's yeah. what Chris Martin did. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right, we'll do we'll do that, and um, also include some links to the repos. Um, Please, man, that was excellent. That was awesome. Well, thank you guys for you, indulging my uh, project. well, not just my hard uh, project. With, uh, stop rockers. What was it? The stop sharing? Did, more did more I hit the wrong thing? Uh, more of what? Did I break more it? More of an idea. Oh, I'm just kidding. I. It does seem like an interesting.